Hello everyone and welcome to the 2019 Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Champion Discs. We're at the Wild Horse Golf Club at this PDJ National Tour as it's kicking off our 2019 season thanks to the PDGA. Love getting outside and challenging yourself to become better? How about spending time with family and friends or just marveling at the pure joy of flight? Then you've come to the right place at the right time. Join the PDGA. Terry Miller here with some solo commentary. I'm gonna keep this low-key commentary as we're on hole one, 415 feet. We're at the Innova Factory Store course. We've got a great group here today. We've got our FPO chase card, Vanessa Van Dyken, Jennifer Allen, Sai Ananda, and Callie McMorrin. And kicking things off right at about the 8 o'clock hour is Vanessa Van Dyken. What a great drive here. 4.15, plays slightly downhill. OB path on that right side. And Jennifer Allen, a little bit more stability, but that'll work, putting her pin high. Ty is just caught up on that left side. You also see that she's sporting a glove and we might see a few hot hands out there. It has been chilly in Vegas with snow during the opening round just two days prior. Good looking shot there by Callie. Playing that skip, that should work. Looks to be just a bit deep for Cy. We opened with very cold temperatures and snow on Thursday's round. Friday's round was very cold, but had really nasty winds in the morning. And finally, we're getting a little break in the weather here during our third round on Saturday. And Jen, maybe with a little bit of a first hole nerves, not quite dialed in on that putt. Things are calm and sunny, but still not exactly warm, and looks like we're not quite warmed up on the putting green here either. Mm, and Vanessa also just a bit short, so unfortunately a few opportunities slip by here. Jen's going to take her time. Don't want to make any unnecessary mistakes here. She's looking to clean up. She'll take her par. Vanessa and Jennifer, as I said, coming in, knotted up for that fifth place spot at the moment. Let's move over to hole two at the factory course. 579 feet, not a lot of danger here. You're really just looking to put it out as far as you can. I wouldn't want to hug that left side. That's where you might find a little bit more of a difficult angle, but no danger to speak of in terms of out of bounds. Put it out, hopefully have a good angle for the approach shot and walk away with a birdie three. And there's that left side I was talking about. I think that's the one place you really want to somewhat avoid only because your approach shot's going to be a little more challenging. We'll see Jen, she gets over on that. I really like the line right out in the open. Should have a good angle. Allie turns that over, but the nose goes up, so not quite the distance we saw from Allen. And a really great flex shot there by Sai. She kept it nice and low, really good 
displacement speed angle. I, I think that's just a textbook drive here. That tree may provide some obstruction there for Callie. Thanks to our friends at UDISC, we can check out a few stats and details throughout the round. And although Sai had the longest drive, it looks like she also had uh, uh, an approach that went just a bit deep for her, making it a little bit tougher. Jack and Jen looking for some of that tap-in action. And uh, this is just a really professional move. I like that by Vanessa. She really didn't have much of an angle at that. She didn't want to force something, possibly make a mistake, turn what should be an easy par into a possible bogey. So she really just laid it up. And Sai also had a look here, but wasn't able to give it quite enough. Hole number two does play under par. It plays as an average of 3.74. Right now, it looks like our only opportunity left for birdie is going to be from Jen Allen. In fact, this is playing as the single easiest hole relative to par on the course. Everyone loves a tap in birdie. Thirty nine percent of the thirty one woman field were able to take the birdie there. Jen Allen with it on this card. So hole three, three hundred eighty nine feet. Probably effectively plays closer to four twenty five, maybe even as much as four fifty uphill. And really, the biggest challenge here is that you have to get the nose up right off the tee. And that immediately is going to take distance away from you. Jen is out in the middle. I think she would have loved to turn that over just a little bit more. A lot of power also by Vanessa, but that is left. That cart path does not come into play here on this particular hole. I believe it does on other holes throughout the course. What I love about watching her throw is that she just seems to have a, a certain finesse to it. Doesn't feel like overpowering. I really like the angle and the placement where that one finished. It looks like slow and smooth, uh, and I think some more of that power and, and distance will just naturally come as Callie's out on the tour playing more. Oh, that happened. <laughs> and Sai said, well, that happened, and she hit it off the front hillside. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about, trying to keep that nose up a little bit higher. She got a really fortunate skip the way it came in that she's still able to get that much distance. She's got about the same distance to the pin, well, maybe not quite. That's going to be long. So trying to make some tough work here of uh, it on hole number three. Routine approach shot, Vanessa executing. This plays as the eighth most difficult hole, just a little bit over par at 3.29. We'll see if those averages are affected by this group. This is the third day, which means that you need to finish in the top 12, as Jen gives that a run. You have to finish in the top 12 if you want to move into the cut line. The cut line is at 12 women, and everyone's guaranteed to get paid out at that point. And that sits down, thankfully. So there's a little additional pressure as we're moving into holes 37 through 54 on the weekend.
<laughs> a little confusion as they talk about who's going to mark off and uh, possibly top, tap in. And we're through three holes. Let's take a look at hole number four. I want to thank Central Coast for the collaboration. Actually, not much of a collaboration. They just uh, lent me their drone footage. So love those guys and really appreciate it. 309 feet with an OB or hazard bunker short of the pin and then a death putt. Oh, if you're short of the basket, it drops off quite heavily behind the pin. The and Jen just okay. barely <laughs> finds the fringe. If she were in the short grass, she would have been considered out of bounds. She just barely got across to find the fringe where she's going to be inbounds from there. Vanessa turns over slightly, kicks off the tree. Wow, and that looks to be a little bit deep of the basket. She'll be putting uphill. Stayed inbounds. I believe you can find a path over there if you go too far past. And a nice low approach playing off the short grass. And that's going to be a dangerous putt that she'll be looking at. She'll have to really decide if she's going to go for that or not. And if you haven't sensed it already, there's a theme of baskets on hillsides. And I feel like you really have to be fully committed because rollaways are all too common out here. So whether you hit the basket or you come up short and you hit something else like the pole, you have to be thinking about the rollaway potential on every single one of these shots. <laughs> hey, heck yeah. Impressive putt there by Sayananda. That's a birdie. And that's what I talk about when I say fully committed. And from a much shorter distance, still one you have to think about a little bit, but. Finds the par. Jen stepping right up with confidence. And it's happened for the par. Moving on to hole five, 470 feet. This place is the third most difficult hole on the course. You can probably see why going to be really tough for anyone to be looking at a get, get a birdie look here because that green is in play. Oh, Sai says it'll work. I don't think she exactly had the release she planned on, but she's right. That'll work. I'm going to show you just how close it was getting up there. I want to thank Kyle Webster out there on the catch camera. Kyle not only working camera in the morning, but then playing 1,000 plus rated golf every afternoon. And Jen also just on that fringe, but she's safe. Also Mo from Central Coast helped out on a few occasions this weekend. So thank you to them along with Throw Pink, the PDGA, the Wild Horse Golf Club, so many supporters. Appreciate it as we're bringing this FPO chase cam coverage. Hopefully we'll see more of that as we move into 2019 and beyond. So, so far three very safe shots. This one needs to get short and it also stays short. Death perception can be really tough out here on a golf course. But it looks like we've got four safe shots ready to go. well executed. You'll find a lot of really good shots may play off short grass. You know you're going to get a skip from them. It's just a matter of controlling the right amount of speed. And it looked like she maybe pulled that one a little bit right. It did stay up top, so she'll have a relatively flat putt, but I think that was considered a misfire there by Callie. dunk action there for Jen Allen. She'll be able to walk away with a stress-free par. Get it. Uh, 
That left side chain. Looking pretty good as this comes in as the fourth most difficult hole on the course. I feel like they navigated it pretty well. We had a look for four birdies. We're going to walk away with three of them. You see Vanessa and Jennifer the closest right now as they're just one off of each other. Sitting at plus five and plus four respectively. Here's hole six. Par five, 770 feet. This also very difficult hole out here. And there's some work to do. find OB on this left side over that cart path and unfortunately that's exactly what Sai has done. Jen makes sure to get over on it. It's so impressive watching her throw with just so much power and authority. Of course Jen the world record holder for women's disc golf or should I just say women's distance able to capitalize on some of that power out here that you find on these courses. I think I misspoke earlier as I was originally looking at the graphic incorrectly. This is just a par four, but still a very challenging one at that. Love the placement here. She's got short grass, very consistent run up, and a full flex on this. And it looks like the card in front of them, that's the third card, they're still putting out. So that shows you just how long and challenging this hole is, knowing we've got two groups playing it at the same time. And Vanessa trying to make things a little tougher on herself as she pulls that one off to the right. Jennifer would have loved for that to turn over. She gets it pin high, so she's looking at the basket in two, but that's not really putting territory. Had she been able to push that off to the right and skipped up to the pin, she might have been looking at a, a much easier birdie attempt. As you can see, the lack of wind on the flag. It's really a gorgeous day out here after the first two days being somewhat brutal. This is what everyone was at least hoping for. Still on the chilly side. Certainly not what you expect anytime you go to Vegas, but it definitely is much more appealing than what we've seen in the previous two rounds. A long tournament to get the season opened. Four rounds, three different courses. They'll finish up during their final round at the Innova course, which will come on Sunday for anyone that makes the cut. And Jen's happy with that as you hear her yelling sit. Again, every opportunity they have to put a basket on a mound or a hillside, they certainly did it just to make people think about it a little more. And that's left side chain for Sai again. That's the second time we've seen that. some smiles here on a beautiful Saturday morning hole number seven wow this one 453 feet right in the middle in terms of difficulty comes in as the ninth most difficult hole on the course some would otherwise say the ninth easiest then however you want to look at that
at 453 feet, there's a little bit of a downward slope to the pin as you get closer to the basket. So it may not play a full 453. Very few women in our field, uh, I think, are going to have the power to be able to actually drive to this pin. And I'd love the creativity. Vanessa says, I've got an idea for how to get there. And she busts out the roller. Unfortunately, that puts her way off to the right side. Just got over on it a little too much. Maybe needed to play the slope of the fairway a little bit differently. Callie's going to go right up the middle. Here's some construction and other action taking place in the background. So sure you want to make sure that you keep your concentration levels up. And that sits down right in the middle. What a great, consistent, low, flat release by Sai Ananda. Sai is the 2016 Amateur World Champion. She claimed that title about 45 minutes west of my hometown. She did that in Madison, Wisconsin. And she's out here from Spokane, Washington. Jen Allen has a long jumper that she's able to give this one a run with and place it right next to the pin. And Vanessa's roller went right as she's coming back at the pin here and it looks like she was a little short on that approach. Just simply didn't give it enough power. She didn't have any obstruction there. It's a pretty solid run by Sai. Vanessa short on her attempt. Seen quite a few changes in the off season from sponsorships for a number of our players. Uh, the only one on this particular card being Vanessa, as I think she's transitioned over from Prodigy Discs to now throwing Discraft Discs. Jennifer Allen sponsored by our events presenting sponsor and Innova Champion Discs. And both Sai and Callie, both within that trilogy family, seeing them throwing dynamic discs, west side discs, latitude discs. So we'll move over to hole eight, 350 feet. Of course, that tree is your number one obstacle. You really have to be concerned about that. That's assuming you hit this gap off the tee. They do give you a little bit of a tunnel to hit, but that tree, is, uh, it is certainly going to come into play. And if it's not on your tee shot, it's going to come into play on an approach or a putt. There is an OB cart path behind the basket if somebody were to drive it that far or possibly approach to it. Sai is happy that that kicked out as much as it did. She said, that's not how you do it. This hole averages just above par at 3.06. And driving all the way to the pin, the cameraman Kyle was trying to catch that in the right position and looks like Vanessa's all but parked it. Thirty-one competitors here to kick off this national tour in 2019 season. Many of them will also venture to the Memorial to kick off the Disc Golf Pro Tour in just a few days. Oh, you're mean. Uh, <laughs> si is telling us the basket is mean, and that looked pretty good. That was a little bit on that right side. It usually looks like it would fall in from that angle, but dead center chain is how Vanessa will take the birdie. Handful of birdies here. Paige Bjerkis, Katrina Allen, Jessica Weiss, Brianna Ansley, all taking the birdies. 
Gonna move over to nine before we close out the front nine. 369 feet. This one's pretty straightforward, figuratively and literally. Plays at 3.03, .03, just a little bit easier than the previous hole. Comes in as the 15th most difficult, or some would say the third easiest. And it's just pretty much grip and rip at this point. You're just trying to put it out there. Uh, Jen Allen getting it almost basket high. We'll go ahead and give her that. We'll call that basket high. Kelly short, but plenty of ground play. Taking that skip. Taking a look at the scores still. Vanessa sits at that plus five. Jennifer Allen plus four. Sai is plus 11. And Callie plus nine. Everybody has to be a little bit concerned to have a solid round. Make sure they make it into that cut on Sunday. couple of long jumpers. And as we close out this front nine, again, thank you to Throw Pink, PDGA, Innova, everyone else involved. Kyle, yes, Jen's gonna take a birdie to close out her front nine. Leave it in the comments. I'd love to know what you think of this course and maybe more specifically, what would you say was your favorite hole on this front nine? I'd love to have a giveaway. Uh, all you gotta do is comment, tell me what you like about the course, what your favorite hole has been out here on this front nine. We'll have a separate question in the back and then we'll have a giveaway for some sweet action. So thanks for joining and we'll see you on the back nine of round three.